Hi guys, and welcome back. In the past few videos, we've taken a look at how you can interact with Windows event logs using PowerShell. Now we're going to switch contexts a little bit, and we're going to take a closer look at Windows performance counters. So let's jump in and take a look at how to find metrics that we want to track, and then how to use PowerShell to actually retrieve those metrics and use them to you know, in, inject into a time series database or whatever kind of logging mechanism you would like to use. All right, so if you're following along inside of the GitHub repository over at github.com slash CBT Trevor, there should be a repository there called Windows Monitoring PowerShell. And I'm going to be here under the 06 directory, find performance counters with PowerShell. And what I'd like to accomplish in this particular video is to just kind of show you where you can find the different performance counters in Windows. So first of all, if you hit Windows R to bring up the run prompt and just type perfmon.msc, you'll come up with the Windows Performance Monitor Microsoft Management Console, or MMC Snap-in. And this is a nice graphical tool if you are new to performance counters to kind of get familiar with different metrics that are available in the Windows operating system. So over here, we've got this nice little graph that's currently just showing us the percent of processor time that's currently being utilized. And as you can see, because I am currently recording video, my processor is working at several percent here. Now, what you can do is you can actually right click on this graph and choose add counters. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to query the local systems performance counter database and look for all of the registered performance counters. Now, keep in mind that the performance mechanism in the Windows operating system is actually extensible. So depending on what software is installed on your system that you're using the performance monitor tool on, you may see different categories of metrics that are listed here. For example, right in front of me here, I have some Hyper-V related metrics because I have the Hyper-V component installed on my local system. If I didn't have Hyper-V installed, these metrics may not be available. Additionally, if you have software like Microsoft SQL Server installed, the SQL Server database engine can actually expose its own set of metrics. Now, you'll see metrics anywhere from, you know, .NET, CLR, common language runtime related metrics, to things like BitLocker metrics, to processor metrics and memory metrics and disk metrics and IP metrics. There's a whole ton of metrics in here, so I would encourage you to just spend some time Kind of exploring the different categories of metrics and all of the individual metrics that are contained in each of those categories. But for the sake of example, what I'd like to do here is drill into the network interfaces here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of metrics under network interfaces. So we've got things like the number of bytes received per second, the number of bytes sent per second, and so on. And what you'll notice is that down here right below the actual metric itself, we have this thing that says instances of selected object. So when you have bytes received per second, you can actually get that metric on a per interface basis, or you can get an aggregate of all of the interfaces combined using the all instances kind of meta metric here. So in PowerShell, we're going to take a look at metrics here in a moment as well. We're going to basically explore this, and you'll see multi-instance and single instance metrics. And any time that you have multiple objects that can be monitored independently from the others, those are what are called multi-instance metrics. Not, not all metrics are multi-instance, but many of them are, depending on what type of object it is that you're actually monitoring. So now that we've taken a look here at the performance monitor, let's exit out of that and switch over into PowerShell and look at how to use PowerShell to actually find metrics that we're interested in monitoring. So what I'll do here is switch over to the Microsoft Windows Terminal, and in the second video, I believe, we covered very briefly the get counter command. So let's start by taking a look at help get counter, and this is a pretty straightforward command. There's really only two different ways of using this command. There's two different parameter sets in PowerShell terminology that exist on this particular command. And you'll see that under the syntax section here of the built-in PowerShell help. So the first parameter set allows us to specify a counter or a metric that we are interested in getting samples from. The other 
parameter set that I'm going to look at here with you is simply allowing us to list out the different metrics that are available on either the local or optionally the remote system. So we can optionally specify a computer name here to connect to a remote system. We're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be using this list set parameter to explore the different metrics that are available locally. Now, one of the nice things about the list set parameter is that we can actually just specify an asterisk to list out all of the different metrics that are available. So if we do get counter, list set, and then asterisk, that will give us a huge list of all the different metric categories on our system, just like we saw in the performance monitor tool. So this is the exact same data that we looked at in performance monitor. It's just that we're getting it through PowerShell instead. Now, obviously, this is kind of a lot of data to sort through. So what you could do is you could take all of these counter sets that we get in response here, and you could pipe them into a where object command to filter them. So basically, if you see this property here, the counter set name, if you know that you're looking for, let's say, network related metrics, then you could run get counter dash list set asterisk, and then pipe that into the where object command specify your filter script and say, I only want the items where the counter set name matches network. And so that's going to filter down this list of counter sets to a much more manageable list that we can actually scroll through. And if you just want to see the actual counter set name, you could even go a step further and perform your filter command here, but then you could just do a select object command and specify that you only want the counter set name property, and that will give you a much more concise list of all of the counter sets that match the criteria that you specified in the where object filter. Now, a much easier way to kind of parse through this data is to actually use a command called out grid view. And what this does is it will spit out a window in PowerShell, basically. So it's actually a separate window from PowerShell, but out grid view is actually a PowerShell command. And what you have is this little filter option up here at the top. Let me just zoom in so you can get a little bit better of a view of this. So what you can do is you can actually see the counter set name property. You can see if it's multi instance or single instance, like we talked about earlier. And then you get this nice description field that goes into a little bit more depth about what that particular metric category covers. So now if we want to look for network related metrics, I can just type in network here. And now I can actually just filter down this list in real time. And if I change my mind and say, oh no, I wanted processor related metrics, I can just type the word processor. And now you can see I'm getting things like processor, Hyper-V processor, virtual processor, virtual switch processor, and pretty much anything to do with a processor. This is a really nice way to kind of filter down the data that you're looking for. However, there is a, another parameter that I wanted to actually show you on outgrid view that actually makes life even easier. So what you can do is specify the output mode of multiple. And what this will do is it will actually pause script execution until you actually select some items from this window. On the bottom right corner of this outgrid view window, it actually has an OK and cancel button now, unlike before. So now what we can do is type a filter like network, and then we can actually select a couple of metric categories or counter sets that we're interested in, like network adapter and network interface. I'm just doing a control select here to select multiple, and then I can click on the OK button, and that will actually return just these counter sets back to my terminal here. Now, to make things even easier, I can actually assign the results of that to a variable, like counter sets, for example. And then I'll do the exact same thing where I just filter down to network and then control click on network interface and adapter. And now I've captured these counter sets inside of a variable so I can very easily reference them later on. So now if I want to look at the actual paths of these counters, I can just type the paths with instances property. And now these are the actual counter names that I can use to retrieve data samples from the get counter command. So in the next video, now that you understand how to kind of explore some of the different metrics that are available on the system, we're actually going to start gathering counter samples or actual data points from these metrics. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.